Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to do part six, or the final part for our REMA forecasting in R. So this is a series that had six videos in it, and this is the sixth one. So if you haven't watched the other five or most of the other five, please go back and watch them because you won't understand what we're doing here. You won't understand where these pieces came from. So in part five, we left off with this graph that shows you uh, the prediction value with seasonality added back in. Which So if you look up here, you can see Arima 203. What that means is that was the original auto Arima uh, factors that we got back maybe in video three or four, I believe. So now when you look at this, this is what we left off at. But what I want to do is we want to do further testing with this. So let's open this up and let's take a look at what I've got here. So we're going to do further testing and analysis for our models. We want to make sure we have them as accurate as possible. So I'm going to show you today how we're going to create four graphs, not just one in the same plot, or the same uh, screen, and that way we can compare them really easily. So the first one here is going to be, we're going to do these TS display functions. And what we're doing, you'll see here in a second, this is with seasonality. So let's hit control and enter here. Let me show you. And this is with a lag max of 15. You could do higher or lower. I would stick with about 15. You don't need to go much further than that, depending on your data set and this data set we don't need to. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me my seasonal model residuals. And most importantly, it's going to show me the ACF and PACF. So what this does is show me how much lag I have in this, how many points come outside of the uh, bounds, the you know the blue areas, the blue lines here, the upper and lower bounds. Okay, so in this case, we know that we have, we already knew this, we had a lag at seven, which we discovered in several of the other previous videos. Okay, this is our fit with seasonality. Now, if we take this, open this back up again, just to show you, this is the uh, residuals, uh, of the fit with seasonality, the la which we created before in the previous video. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. Lag max of 15, okay, and we're using TS display. We're going to do it again here with the auto arima with the seasonality turned to off. So we're using our deseasonal count. So if I hit control and enter there, let's see what that shows. This is the same thing. This is TS display, the TS display function. So it shows us, bam, we got a big one at seven. See that right there? We know that going into it. Okay, and there's some la some PACF, which is previous factored in, so that'll factor into 14. So you take seven and half, of, you know, it goes to 14, and then it would happen again at 21 and so on. It'd be lesser and lesser as it goes on. So we know that there's a lag at seven. We understand that, okay? Next, I want to show two others. So we got two more call this fit four. This one here is a custom of 117. Remember we did this when we built this one up. This is the one we just tested in the previous one and we showed it brings a pretty straight line out of it with a little bit of you know going up and down at the beginning but most of it's straight line and that may not necessarily be what we want so we may want to bring some seasonality back in. But let's take a look at that and see what that does. So when we look at that one Look at that, we have our upper and lower bounds are all met. We know that because the seven for the value of P, the Q value, the last of the three PDQ, is uh, taken care of by, instead of having 111, we have 117. So that takes that into account. But it might meet our needs of being accurate, but it may not represent our data correctly or in the best way possible. And then we also have this one here where I'm using the default. So when you use an application uh, that has built-in models to it that you don't have to really do much coding with, there's a lot of those out there, but when you do that, uh, generally speaking, they're going to use a 111 or a 777 value for their ARIMAs, and you're not going to be able to pick much out of that. So what I've got here, let's run this, and this is our 111 value, and let's see what that does it's got a huge lag at seven okay and the same thing as the previous one did so you know it is that going to meet our needs most likely not and that's why we're doing this complete workout here we want to be able to document and prove with many many tests and much documentation that this is the most accurate model in the end that we're going with and why and you can't do that when you use an application this is oh here it is and behind it's one 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 
and you can't change that to anything else. Um, so you can use those, but keep in mind when you use an application that has something like that built in it, understand that it's not going to be the most accurate prediction possible. So that's why we're doing what we're doing in this video and in the previous videos. So we have all four of those. You've seen that. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to plot them up against each other. Right? I want to have all four of them not necessarily on top of each other because it would be very hard to tell which one's which. Instead I want to have four graphs. So like you'd see three here. I want to see four graphs but of the forecast for each. So what I need to do is this pair PAR function and MF row equals C and we're going to have two comma two. So two comma two means I'm going to have two at the top, two at the bottom. Two rows of two charts each. So what we do is we do this and that's going to automatically make it so it's sectioned off into four pieces, four graphs. You're not going to see it yet, but you will in a second. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to forecast the first one, right? And then we're going to forecast the second one. So you'll see here, all we're doing is calling in the forecast function for all four of these. So you can see it right here, it's forecast. And then each one inside it is just the piece. So this is the fit with seasonality, which we did right here. That piece right here, okay? And then the next one, we're doing fit three, which is what we built right above here. That, which is this, the autorema. So that one, it, and I'll just explain this all to you. We've got the next one will be fit four, and the next one will be fit five. So you'll see them right here. You have a plot for this. It's, they're all put into a vector. So we got fcast, fcast two, fcast three, and fcast four and then each one of these is plotted. So what I'm going to do is I've already created this which sections them off into four, right? And then because I've done, if I don't do that it'll only show me the last graph. So I have, this is important to have this to see all four. Now once I've done that I can just go and do this and they're all for 30 days just so you can see here. So they're all the same thing. H equals 30, it could be H equals 50. I could have 50 days. I could have 60 days. I've got 100 days. The more days you put in, the longer it's going to take for this to run to come back. I mean, it's not a big deal. It might take two to three minutes if I put 50 on there. But let's just do this. So I'm running four different graphs, right? So let's do this. Hit enter, and there they are. Bam, because I just did 30. And what's really neat, let's bring it all out here so we can see it all. Let's take this up there so we can see it better. Is that now you can see four graphs, and one of them is a little different than the others. And the reason being is this one down here. So this one is the 111 arema, and it takes a lot more data. It's less accurate. So what you'll see is the upper bounds and lower bounds are different than these guys. So what we have is for these three, sandwiched further into a smaller amount because it has a wider spread. So their 80% here is way beyond the 95% here, or I mean, how the 95%, the darker blue area, I'm sorry, is actually wider. It goes beyond 0.8, so it's wider than the 95% here. So this is much less accurate, this one here. That's why when you use the default applications uh, and their ARIMA forecasts, you'll be a lot less accurate. That's why we're doing what we're doing in these this six video series. Um, so that's just to show you the general, you know, uh, less accurate uh, ARIMA forecasts that you can see in applications. And we're going to plot that up against these guys. So the first one here is that 203 we saw, so we brought back in the seasonality in there. The second one is without the seasonality in there, okay? So we remove the seasonality. So this is what seasonality brings into it. This is without seasonality. And then this one down here is where we took into account the uh, lag of seven. So out of these, which one would be the most accurate? So we have to look at this and we have to look at our data before. If our data was more straight line, we might go with this one here. Uh, we might go with this one here. These numbers are pretty much the same for these three for the left on the of the axes. So what that means is that um, you know it's not like this one where we have to understand it looks neater, but the thing is it's condensed the highs and the lows. So this is actually much larger of an area of uh, uh, you know the prediction and the forecast. So we would want to stick with one of these three, and then out of those three, this one with the seasonality added back in 
due to our previous data with its ups and its downs and its higher variance, this would be much better. This, you know, with our variance, it could go one or the other outside of that very quickly. This looks much more realistic. So in the end, this is what we're going to go with is this one right here, which is our tooth 03 or our auto arema that we did earlier. And what we can do to see that better again is what we did in the first video, or not the first, the uh, previous video, video number five, is that we did a uh, plot. Now, I want to show you one thing. Since I did this P, um, PAR function on this and split it up into four graphs, if I don't run this right here and change it back to one graph, what will happen is, let me show you exactly what will happen here. I can take this, which is just the forecast based on FIT2, which is up here, uh, which is our original one of that 117, but with the uh, seasonal stuff added back in. So let's do this, watch. See that? There's the, uh, the wrong one, that's not the one we would want. But see how it's just one graph on there? So I have to run this. And then once I've run that, which is one, instead I'm making one row of one graph. Okay, this is basically what I'm doing there. Now when I do this, see the difference? Otherwise it's split to make up for three more uh, graphs in there. But what we want to see is the one with the seasonal fit in it, okay? which is the uh, auto arima, which we did down here. And the one that we liked the best was this fit three. So let's go back down here. And which one was it? You remember, it was this one, I believe, right here. It was the first one. So what we want to do is this forecast right here. Okay, hit control and enter. There it is, and I'll bring it back in just a second. And what I want to do is I want to put these lines back in it to make it more accurate. So I'm going to copy these down because that's our final one we're going with. And I'm going to copy those. I'm going to bring them right back down underneath it, just like this. Put them right there. And what I want to do is I'm going to bring this up a little bit bigger. Let's grab this out here. So that's going to be our forecast. Now, what I want to do is I want to add in, if you want to see it again, remember we put in the uh, uh, moving average for one week. And here is the uh, de-seasonal data. So with that in there, our forecast looks pretty good. Now let's take these two out. So what we can do is let's just do this again. But this time instead, see that's 30 days? What happens if we do 50 days? We make this H equals 50. Let's see what happens there. Let's do this. It's gonna take a second, there it is. And look at that. Now if we bring the lines back into that, let's see if it's still accurate at 50 days. There they are. We're still within the 95% balance, starting to go down to the bottom. But it's not bad, we're good. It's very accurate, we've totally documented this. We've gone with test after test after test. The, the Dickey Fuller tests, the uh, uh, variance tests, uh, tests with holdouts. I mean, so you can document. This is a complete data science project where we're doing a forecast, but a well-documented forecast on a time series data set. And it could be any time series we want to do here. But in this case, uh, I wanted to show you how we do it, how we go from the beginning with the data all the way to the end, and it's every step along the way. You can go back and watch the other videos and uh, make sure you know how to do this, and you document all the graphs and the code that you use. And when you've done that, in the end you have a complete documented project that A, you can use to go get yourself a job in data analysis or data science, you know, projects are the things that get you in the door, or that if you're in the door, but you're, you know, you're, you get the interview, but you've got, you're up against six people, uh, 10 people, 15 people, and some of them are from top colleges, you want to have the projects, because the projects make you shine. They know that if you can do things like this, you can do anything. 
uh, you can they know that you, when you walk in you can run from the get-go they don't have to sit there and train you I mean there's gonna be things when you start a new job anyway where you have to learn the data and you know where it is and how to get it and stuff like that but they know that you have the concepts and you, they know that you'll understand what they're talking about this is a good way to impress some data scientists or data analysts if you want also and they'll understand what you're talking about uh, and they'll be impressed that you know these things so this is a great way to show your data and I've shown you step by step how to create a very accurate uh, forecast on any time series data we took seasonality and so if we go back video one was an exploratory data analysis we went and plotted it we wanted to see the variance we wanted to see the highs and the lows we wanted to see the outliers and we took care of those things the second one we decomposed the data we took seasonality trending and cycling into account and we removed that from the data and then in the third uh, um, one we went and uh, looked at autocorrelations and the fourth one we went and actually built our model fifth one we started testing it sixth one we tested it some more and then we ended up with a finalized selection of this arima model with 203 as the pdq values and that's with the seasonality added back in and you can see it's a very accurate model and it looks the you know the lot there the plot the lines are not a straight line so it looks you know it reflects the variance before and after it so that's what you want it looks good for your users um, this is how we do this in data science and data analysis thanks for watching this series uh, I hope you found it beneficial and helpful please like and subscribe below so you can see all my other videos and go back and watch the previous ones for this. I have some other great series in there for all kinds of things from data science, data analysis, uh, exploratory data analysis, all kinds of great stuff for you. And I'm going to have a lot of great stuff coming out like this. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.